everybody, how are you doing? I toast to you and all you do. <clears throat> I hope you're having a fantastic evening, afternoon, morning, whatever it is for you. It's afternoon here. So, I know I'm not making videos as often as I was. Um, through the introspective journey, I always do them every day, or at least try to do them every day, because every day is part of that introspective journey. Getting back to homeschooling and life and doing this book writing and all so many things. I guess I don't even talk about all of the different things that I do on here. Maybe I'll make a video about it. Today, I want to talk about two things. So I want to talk about the full moon because that's coming up. Um, it's coming up tomorrow. And then as I got my notes together to talk to you guys about the full moon, which is a hair tie in my notes. <laughs> I uh, was thinking about the um, Astaria Sen video I watched and her her book of shadows, her journal, beautiful. Oh my God, that's beautiful. Uh, it's very decorative. She's an amazing artist, so it really makes a thing. Uh, but it's amazing. Okay, so I've also watched like the Witch Boss. I've seen her book of shadows. I watched lots of different people make their book of shadows video, okay? It doesn't look like this. Okay, most of the time, I'm, I, I have one, hold on, okay? So you can kind of see this whole shelf right here. These are all Book of Shadows um, over the years. Um, so I have, I have beautiful ones that are like this, that uh, I've never written in because whatever. Um, and I made another video about this before um, I wanted to make a note though, like, so I have this book of shadows. This was a coven book of shadows that we did like as a group. And so it has, look, I, it has pretty art. It's beautiful. This section is supposed to be for divinity. Um, here's one for prosperity. You can see, like, it's a rune. It's a prosperity bind rune. Uh, in Pictish, it says prosperity, which if you can see, I totally spelt wrong the first time that I transcribed it. It's all right. There are mistakes everywhere. It's fine. Um, so there's, like, a section for protection. Uh... There, see, so we did write stuff in it. So we had like rules for the coven. Um, there's some other little things in here, whatever. Um, there's a book blessing. So this is a big part of a lot of Book of Shadows. Actually, that has isn't something that I've seen in other videos, come to think of it. So let's talk about it real quick. Um, your Book of Shadows is a protected book. This, I mean, they're not always like this, where they're super fancy. We're going to get there. But when you have one of these bound books, it's like a, a nicer, this is something, a journal you're going to keep forever. Um, maybe one day I'll pick this up and use it again. It's a really nice book. It's all color-coded. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you can totally tell. They're different color pages. It's really cool. I'm really curious as to what this paper is. Okay, I'll look at it before I show you. Oh, look at it. See, it's got all the elements on it. Let's see. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. See, it does so much at me. You know, I'm, like, drawing. Kind of good at it. Not really, though. Um, <clears throat> anyways. So, one of the first things that the boy's done for these fancy ones is you write a book, book blessing or a protection spell or some kind of intent thing. So... This one says, Lord and Lady, Mother, Father, powers of earth and fire and water, I call your power, protect this book and all it holds from prying eyes, let no enemy read these lines, keep untrue hands from flipping these pages, so it is written, as above, so mote it be. Oh, as above, so below, as so mote it be. Um, <clears throat> so this one is real protective, like don't let other people look into this. This is like a, if you're not for looking eyes, you can't see in here. Uh, which is really funny because it's totally empty. I mean, it's got like the section pages and it's got this little rule and it's got our intent. Um, it's got a healing spell in it. You know, just some little things, but it's not, 
it wasn't used because for me personally I put so much thought and energy into like oh my goodness I have to do this it has to be this way it has to be really nice as you can see like they're colorful they're pretty um, and they're not as used as the other ones just simply because I feel like there's a lot of pressure in writing in those books so for me I always end up not doing it um, <clears throat> And for a while, I was like, oh, I can't do a book of shadows. I'm never going to be able to do that. That's not going to work for me. What I ended up doing instead are this. So this is one of those, like, you remember when you were in middle school and they were like, do a, make a trapper keeper uh, of all of the, which is really funny because this is punched on the wrong side. This just shows you how my brain works. Okay, so the first pages are backwards. <laughs> sorry okay the whole reason I'm doing this is because when I pick up my working book of shadows which is what I call it because that's what it is it's a half day planner half whatever magic book that I write in every day all the time I carry it around I use it I put a lot of energy into it so it's my working book of shadows some of those things will get put into I'm currently working on a book um, about the moon so a lot of the stuff's going in there um, some of it is for a curriculum I'm writing, some of it is for magical spells, some of it is notes. There's a book called Tell My Horse. I'm going to recommend to everybody. I haven't read it yet. My daughter was telling me about it. She's learning about black history and homeschooling. She was reading about an author. Her name is Zora Neale Hurston. And it's called Tell My Horse. So, way random side tangent. We're always talking about white people who are writing books about indigenous cultures and indigenous stories and like all the white people are writing books about voodoo and how this is cultural appropriation and blah 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 so this tell my horse she is a african-american writer and anthropologist she did an amazing thing for women's rights and black american rights and women's black rights and all kinds of she was just a huge important advocate and author um, but she also went and lived with Haitian tribes and African tribes and lived with these people and learned their cultures as those were her ancestors. Those were her people. Like that's like, so, and she wrote books about it. So this is one of them. So I, my daughter was telling me about it. I was like, wait, wait, I got to write that down. I need to read that book. So if you're interested in, in things like that, it's called Tell My Horse. And her name is Zora Neale Her Hurston. Okay. So anyways. So this fancy book thing, back to what we're here about, this fancy book thing didn't work for me. So then I started things like this. This is one of those trapper keepers. It's got like a, it's like a report holder. That's what it is. It's a report holder. So the first pages are backwards because that's how I roll. They're about the runes. This whole thing is, this is my rune notebook. Um, and I have the list of all the runes, what they mean, the different fur arcs, um, and it goes through all of them. And then it has notes from a book I read, because when I used to not be able to buy books or afford books, I just go to the library and then I would write down or photocopy. I have like, <laughs> uh, I don't know where that is. I have a, I have one of those like 1982. Uh, trapper keeper things with the zippers I guess that anyways we're not gonna talk about how old I am the zipper things and it's full of photocopy books like uh, through the mist uh, oh no a mist filled path amazing book I loved it so much I pretty much paid to photocopy the whole thing like so that I could keep it in little sections um, but okay so I've got notes um, I've got things that it said are important. I've got lessons on the runes. So I went through, and so some of them are typed. Like, look at how cute that is. I typed it. It's all about FAO and what that means. And then I did, a, this is an automatic writing thing where you draw the rune and then you visualize the rune in your mind's eye or whatever it is that you're doing. And then you automatic write. And I do this before I learn about the room, before I read the book, before I do any of that stuff, I write down the visions that come to me. Um, I probably have some 
prior knowledge on most of it because like this one's real accurate it's like life wealth beginning starting nurturing like it was just like a, anyways so <clears throat> and it goes through all of them and so that's my that's my rune thing it's definitely not fancy all of them have writing it's totally punched backwards a lot of it I don't know why that happened and just I guess how it happened and then I was like oh I guess that's how it went in there um and so I use this for a long time um I have one for something else or this or that these are my favorite of my these are my favorite of my book of shadows because many moons ago when I used to not have children and we would have big community gatherings and everybody would get together um, for all of the holidays. We would, at every holiday, oh look I even pulled out the in bulk book, how appropriate. Um, so here's the in bulk book. Um, we would say something about the holiday and where it was and whose house it was and then the guest book. And so everybody would sign it. Um, so you see everybody's signature who came to the holiday and then let's see somebody got really fancy and put their stuff on the back and then there's normally like a prayer that and i would put the prayer and stuff in there ahead of time so that way when people were signing the guest book they could look over them like, okay we're gonna say this prayer this time we did a meditation and i wrote that in there um one of my coven wives wrote a poem in here about in bulk i don't know what day it was on and, uh, so, but, and then every year, so here's the next year, you see new signatures and more stuff. And here's another year, more signatures. We would just go through it every year. We would do that. Um, these, cause also we didn't have a lot of money and these books are expensive. So the other side is the opposite holiday on the wheel of the year, which helped everybody learn what is the opposite holiday which when you're learning about the holidays helps to see on like the wheel of the year and helps learn about the attributes and all that stuff but so the other side when we wrote it in celtic all the way okay that's not really how you say it but that's my joke every year when people are like what holiday are we celebrating most people call it llamas i don't know if this is gaelically pronounced llamas i'm pretty sure it's not i think llamas comes from some other word it has nothing to do with that word um this is this translates i'm pretty sure as lou's holiday or the day to celebrate lou and lou is the celtic god and he has many trades and many skills and that's what you come together to celebrate on that holiday um so and then you know everybody the little kids we did this Oh my god, it's so cute. If only Becca was watching. Becca, look at it's a Hayden's and Cameron's book. I'm gonna tag her somewhere. Let's see everybody's little hands. That's so cute. I'm sorry, it just brings back so many memories. Oh my god, look and then the mom and dad they did it. Oh, I love it. Anyways, oh my god, she's friends with me on Facebook. Look at their shirt. So um, so long ago like this is from 2011 okay so so this is just a really fun way to like get the whole community involved in making something that you keep so there's these kind of book of shadows that are really journaly and like communal and and like scrapbooky some of them have stuff glued into them and whatever so they always sit in the main altar area um <clears throat> So we have all of this and all of that, and I use three ring finders, but when it comes to, I, I can't even fit them all back up there. When it comes to actually a book that I'm using, this is what they look like. Um, you see right here, I have a spell that I'm writing for the full moon in Cancer. Um, now, I guess this is kind of a sales pitch for this type of journaling also, which I don't typically do I'm not a big whatever anyways if you have never heard of disc journaling I find this immensely useful in my pagan practice because we're constantly taking notes or we're reading a book or we're doing a thing or we're working on a spell or we're whatever and you don't want to write in this book 
Oh, sorry. Okay. So you don't want to write in this book. You don't want to be like, I'm going to take notes in my magical, like this is where I put spells, book of shadows. Sometimes you can keep journal entries. All of my book of shadows will have journal entries in them. I think that it's important to add that piece of you and that piece of your heart and your soul of what's going on in your life at that time. But to take notes in one is like, and you can't, it's hard to rip pages out because normally they're like fancy pages. I have some that are like linen pages. I have this amazing one my sister made me with like collaged pages. It's beautiful. Someday I'll use it. Okay, so anyways, the disc journal thing, amazing. Um, I don't even use a cover on mine. I use the little to-dos as like bookmarks because here's another crazy thing about my book of shadows. I just open to a random page. And I'm like, here's the page I'm working on today. And then tomorrow. And then right now I'm using this one. Um, and it's usable. It's something that you can keep using and you don't have to put it down and put it aside. I'm not saying don't do these other things. They're amazing. And I have some really good ones. They're not on this shelf because this is like where I keep all the books. They're over there where whatever. But you keep all of them, but use what's useful for you. Um, watching like, uh, a star ascends video, which was amazing and beautiful. And I love her book of shadows. I love her prompts. Um, I, the courage, she did courage or, uh, I think it was courage. I, a word, pick a word, whatever. So that was really amazing. I really like that. Um, I just write made notes. It's on one of these pages, like, it's on one of these to-do pages. I like wrote the word and like, all the things. Um, and use it how you need to use it. So this is really awesome because the pages come in and out. And I'm not ripping them out. As you can see, they're like a funny shaped thing. Um, you buy the little setups. I got this one on sale at uh, Office Depot for like $2 came with like a hundred and whatever pages I'll never I, I mean it'll take me a while to use all these pages but super useful um and it's easy and these little things come in all colors and whatever so it just can be something that's very usable and then that can be transferred and if you have a page in here that's super fancy and that you really like you can decoupage it into your fancy book of shadows and you know make it more like keep it long term so it's not just in this temporary thing. So there's a whole spiel on Book of Shadows and using your Book of Shadows and whatever it is you use. My second thing is using books. My kids are like, Mom, what happened to your book? So I write in my books. My sister wrote in this one. We all write in them. Um, and we just make notes. Can you see? Just make little notes about things. We underline things. We talk about things. Um, which is fun when you're sharing books. Because then you get to see like somebody else's notes. Like, oh, or they found this part really important. I really didn't. Or I find this other part important. Or whatever it may be. Um, and so my books become Book of Shadows. They become working things that I actually use. Now, obviously not the library books. But like normal books. So I absolutely love the Spell a Day and the Almanacs and the Whatnots. Um, they are, I just find them really useful because I have a lot of examples. And when people are like, oh, I need to write a spell or I want to learn about new things, they're just great places to start. But again, I make notes of them. I take, I mean, they have like a little note section in these ones. But I take advantage of that and I use it and I work with it and it's not just something that sits there and is stagnant and doesn't do anything. And then I really remember it and later when I'm like, oh hey, I need to write a spell about the Leo full moon, oh, I know just the book for that. And I can run to the bookshelf and grab a book I need. Um, <clears throat> so, sorry, I dropped the book that I need. Uh, <laughs> so, the next full moon... The whole reason I got my working book of shadows, I have, that's not it. I have this sheet, which is my list of full moons for the whole year and whatnot, uh, and new moons and quarter moons. Um, I have another one that has even more detail, which 
is pretty awesome because it tells you when the planets are going into retrograde, like Uranus just went direct, so it came out of retrograde. Oh, Saturday the 30th, Mercury goes into retrograde, everybody, just in case you didn't see all the memes yet. I haven't been on Facebook a lot lately, so I guess I didn't get my notification. Uh, yep, Saturday the 30th at 8.51 a.m., Mercury goes into retrograde. <clears throat> It'll be great. We'll have lots of problems solving. Trust me. Uh, <laughs> anyways, the full moon is in Leo, and it comes on the 28th, which is tomorrow. Um, so my time is 12.16. Uh, so. Wait, hold on, I gotta check. What did I say? 12.16 p.m. Yeah, so be at about noon sometime um, late morning early afternoon depending on where you are in the United States if you're on the other side of the world you'll have to print out the one you can find these are on the peacock pages.com uh, yeah, I'll have to find the one for your time section I don't know off the top of my head so it's in Leo so the full moon obviously is this very ripe abundant time where the energy is just in plethora and a lot of people feel really charged like they can just do stuff that's why i think all of the like they say all the crazies come out on the full moon it's really just that everybody has more energy everybody is charged everybody is uh you know kind of motivated to do stuff so we have the full moon coming in leo and leo is the i'm um, the lion the the leader the proud um, kind of energy and that comes with that they're also super creative it's a creative energy that's motivating and makes you want to do stuff um, <clears throat> so as I say in this other book that I have see I mark the page. okay so the energy it's of the Sun it's fire it's masculine and um, it's very charismatic so if I was to put a person on this, it would be the charismatic father. It would be that one who is, you know, takes the kids for the hike on the trail and is putting up the tents and doing all of the things, very motivated, very much the leader, very much in tune with that and proud and proud to teach and share those skills. And so it's just very much like, let me share my creative energy with you. So on this full moon, it's a great time to get creative and do something that is, you know, new and bold, I guess. And for that idea, just in case you don't have one, uh, making candles is so fun and messy. And... <laughs> Uh, but under the Leo moon can be a great time. He can help inspire you and get you in tune and it kind of brings together that masculine and feminine energy so that you can really be balanced and to get creative. So if you have a creative time, you'll probably feel really motivated to do something creative. If you are not super creative and you're not overly crafty, I have a fun craft to share with you that's not too hard. So these are what we call casting candles. And as you can see, they have little holes in them, which are amazing. So we have this green one. Um, so they're really awesome and they're super useful. If you've done a candle magic spell before where you've had to annoy, oh my God, my nose itches so bad suddenly. Mm. So if you've had to do a candle magic spell and they're like anointed and put oil all over it and fill it with herb wrap it with herbs um, it's a messy process <laughs> and a lot of times you walk away smelling like the oil for days um because a lot of times the oils are humid and then not only are you touching it while you're anointing it but then you're touching it while you're using it in magic and while you're clean so there's a lot of contact with these essential oils um, some essential oils are actually really not good for your skin so that's also part of the problem like there's this whole list so then you get like all of these precautions are like okay you can use use the peppermint oil or the clove oil but don't get them on your skin um and i guess same with raw cloves especially don't you don't want some concentrated cloves on your skin it will corrode your skin like i've had it's it's very acidic even though it's not an acid but anyway so <clears throat> The casting candles are awesome because instead, okay, so I have some 
uh, I grew up calling it Tranchara sagebrush. Uh, it would be like a, oh, it smells so good. It'd be local sage here, like wild sage. Um, the technical name is sagebrush, one, or sagebush, one word. Um, it's actually in the Artemis family and not the Sativa family, so it's kind of different. But anyways, so I have my herbs. I'm not going to put oils on it because I'm not actually doing the magic, but you would put the oil in the hole right here, and then you put your herbs on top of that. Oh, you can kind of see it filling up. That's fun. Okay, and then you put that in there. And there's lots of little holes. So you can take your dropper and you can just put some oil in all the different holes and then dust it with the herbs. And without making a giant mess, I'm not super covered in herbs. I now, I have my anointed candle. Uh, and they're not hard to make. So but you can buy wax at all the hobby stores or you can order it online and use a double boiler, melt the wax, boil water, melt the wax. It's going to make a mess. I would dedicate a pan and a bowl if you're going to make candles. Even like when we make candles, we do a, I'll do like 40 pounds because it makes a huge mess. We just make a whole day of it where we mount, melt five pounds at a time, pour five pounds, melt five pounds, pour five pounds. Um, <clears throat> that way we get different colors. As you can see, I've got yellow and green got red I got all the different colors um so the way to make them super easy okay melt the wax while the wax is melting you take a Dixie cup and you poke a hole in the bottom and you feed a piece of wick through buy the pre-prepared wick it's a pain in the ass to do the wick thing um, you can use string it doesn't burn the same you have to soak it in the wax it's got to be treated it's a thing so just buy the the reel of what uh, pre wick. Okay. Poke a hole in the bottom, pull the wick through. That is the top of your candle. So as you can see, we cut that one really short. I don't know why. <laughs> you don't have to cut them that short, but the string coming out the bottom is that put a piece of tape on it. Any tape doesn't matter. Uh, flip it over and the other side of the string, you're going to wrap that around a pencil, a uh, popsicle stick, anything that'll fit on top of your paper cup. And then you just set that there and it's ready. Next, you take some ice cubes and you crush them up. Not super crushed. I mean, the smaller your ice cube, the smaller your holes will be. Uh, and then pour wax over it and let it sit. It doesn't take long for it to set up. And then pull your paper cup off and cut your wax down. And that's it. Easy peasy. And now you have your own candles. And they're easy to do magic. And tomorrow will be a great time to make them. Um, and the Leo Moon will help you get motivated. And you can make something new. Oh, I can hear my husband. He's calling on the phone upstairs. I have to go. I hope that you all have a great day. Hold on. I'll just pause. I'll be back. Okay. So... Anyways, I'm sure he's going to call back because I tried and phone tagged. Whatever. I just wanted to wrap up. Um, so the Leo full moon is a great time to get creative and do something. Casting candles are really fun. Um, something different. And to add a little thing, I just use a little tiny Dixie cups like for brushing your teeth. So they're perfect. Um, but if you have any questions, don't forget or don't hesitate to ask, comment, do all that stuff. I hope that you all have a great full moon tomorrow. And I toast to you and all you do. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that great stuff.